Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Kali Linux and especially the Metasploit framework and tool which is a Linux distribution to find information about this Metasploitable tool which is um, a target machine with a lot of vulnerabilities. If you haven't checked my previous videos, please check my tutorial about the hacking or penetration testing and see how these tools are installed. So, to start Metasploit Framework, you simply click this uh, M icon. And please do it over here, because if you do it on the command line, the database may not be initialized. So by clicking this button, you can be sure that the um, database is automatically initialized for the first time when you start it, and therefore it's ready to be used. It will take a moment to create database schema, after which you can for example, after you have scanned targets, they will be automatically added into the database and you can use them um, to do your exploiting. Right, so the framework is now launched. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger now. And you can see that right now there are more than 1600 exploits, uh, which are basically the pieces of code that will break into a system using secu security holes and then execute some code there. Um, al almost 1000 auxiliary modules, which are basically modules that allow you to do different things like scanning or gathering information. They don't break into the system, but they, they can be very useful as uh, the first step before you exploit. And then there are a bunch of post modules, which are modules that can uh, run after you have exploit. And then uh, 486 payloads, which are usually used together with exploit. So exploits are the ones that will break into the system and payloads are the software components that will be executed after exploitation has been completely successful. So you usually combine them together. And then a bunch of encoders and knobs as well, which I will not touch right now. So, so many modules, so how do you know which one to use? Let's see, first we use the help command, which is very useful to read information about different commands. So if you just type help, you can see a lot of um, different things that you can search about help with. So interesting things are, is the core command, which is just controlling the, the framework. Um, then you've got module commands for specific modules for jobs, uh, for resources, and for database. Now, I'm not going to cover all these commands, but I will I will cover some of them. And if you want to have uh, information about specific command, you can do, for example, help search, and it will show you what you can do with the search command. Um, for example, there are different keywords that you can use, and then specify, um, for example, a specific name descriptive name for the module that you want to search for CVE which is the um, common vulnerability and exposures ID that identifies publicly known vulnerability. You can search CVEs online. Um, another example help use um, we use the use command to for example set the module that we want to execute and help info which is um, info is a very useful command giving more information about the module, a full description of the module and how to use it, the parameters that you need to set and so on. But so help is a useful command and of course you can find online more information but let's use the, um, the search first. So if you just type um, for example let's, let's do this help search again. So if you type for example um, search let's say uh, platform You can see a lot of different things about Windows, a little bit too many. You can see that there are some host modules. They are probably, if I just scroll enough up, you can see exploits and so on. All of them target at Windows. But this is a little bit too many. So let's um, also target as name MySQL. So all those modules that have platform windows and use MySQL as the uh, descriptive name. So you can see that, okay, let me make this window a little bit larger, as well as this one. You can see that, okay, now we don't have that many modules anymore. We have a bunch of different 
exploit module, so the, the first one is what type of module it is, and then uh, what platform, what software, and so on, name of the module. And you can see the date when it was created, and rank. And this rank is important for the success of your module if you want to run it. For example, this one is excellent. So given conditions, if there is a security hole in this Oracle MySQL, um, it's probably going to succeed. Right. So what else we can search? We can search pipe. So for example, instead of searching exploit, we can search payload and um, platform windows. It will show the payloads, the code that can be executed after exploiting on Windows. Um, you can also search by the CVE code. For example, we can see all the vulnerabilities that were reported using the CVE system in 2017 and those have, that have been added to the Metasploit. So these are fairly new, um, so you can see that there are not so many of them, but if you see from 2016, there are ma many, many more already. Right, so you can combine those search keywords to get more specific results. And if you, for example, know some um, specific software name, for example, um, um, I think there is uh, Unreal I, um, IRC. So if we search Unreal, okay, there is the Unreal tournament, but also the Unreal IRC uh, IRC, um, IRC demon. It's a chat system server. So there is a backdoor that can be utilized by using this module, but it only applies to this version. Okay, so now that we know how to use the search and, and uh, how to search modules, we need a target. So we do have this target machine over here, but and we can actually see the um, IP address also here. So it's a uh, 1921681 and 17. So let's remember that. 17 is the last digit. So we can use a database to do some um, port scanning. We can use database for storing the result of the port scan and then um, see what kind of services that particular target has. So to do a simple port scan, oh, let me show first this uh, DB status so we can see that status is connected. We have connected to the database and we can see if there are any hosts that have been stored in the database. No, there are none because we haven't added anything, we haven't done any scanning. So in order to um, add some new hosts, target hosts to this table, we need to perform ppnmap. This is essentially the same than the nmap command, but all the results will be stored automatically to the database in inside the meta Metasploit framework. So. I'm going to do a very simple scan using V. Yes, v means uh, verbose, so I can see a lot of information messages. And then S is the type of the scan. Uh, v meaning it's trying to establish version of the service, so it's trying to identify which version of each service or, or server it's, it's running at the moment. Um, big O meaning operating system, so it tries to identify operating system of the target and then the IP address. It can take a while, but I think it should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to make another video later about how to use this nmap, so different um, options and how to use it in a more efficient way. This is just one example. So you can see that it discovered quite many different open ports here. Um, many of them actually, if not all of them, are TCP ports. And now it also established versions of the software. So you can see a bunch of different software here running uh, with different versions. Some of them are pretty old, outdated, and they have some security holes. So now that the scan is completed, if we do the hosts again, you can see that now this address has been added, MAC address, um, operating system Linux, and version, and it's a server computer. Uh, then there are a couple of other commands that are useful. We can do services that will list all the known services from this host. If you have more than one host, it shows you all those hosts that have been scanned. So for example, in uh, port 22, we have open SSH server. Um, this type is um, SSH, 
and all these ports seem to be open. Um, I'm going to show you how to attack in this video. I'm going to show you how to attack the um, IRC server. So this Unreal IRC, it's um, located up here, and it's at port six 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 seven. Okay. There are, as I said, many, many more ways to do um, nmap port scanning, but this is just, just one way. Um, there is also one more command related to database, which is uh, booms, vulnerabilities, but right now there are none, because th there are no, no vulnerabilities stored in the database. Uh, later, as we use these modules, we do especially these auxiliary modules, we can identify vulnerabilities and they can be automatically added to the database. Okay, so how can we exploit, how can we attack to this server? So first we need to find appropriate exploit from the um, modules. So search Unreal IRCD, as we did before, and it shows this exploit. So this is the, the full name of the exploit and you need to use the full name, not just the end, not just this uh, last part. You need to use the full name to enable it. So, if you want to use this exploit, you can just type use. Of course, you can write exploit, Unix, and, and if you if you hit the tab, it's going to it's going to um, fill in the rest of, of the name path if, if it can. So, let's use this module and you can see that the context is changed. Now change to that module as the context and if you want to go back to the previous context you can simply write back and it comes back to the main context. But let's get back to this. Um, if I want to see information about this module I can simply write info, very useful command. It gives you the full description of this module, um, like the, the targets of, of where it's going to be applied, rank of it, um, what options, what parameters are needed, so we need our host, remote host, and our port, which is by default 6667. So this one we should set. These two are required, so we must provide information there. Um, you get the description of the module and information about the CVE that is connected to it. So, to set... Um, oh, oh, one more thing. Um, so, so this one shows options, but the, there's also a command show that can also show options and only options. Um, show can also show, for example, um, exploits. It shows actually all the exploits. So it's like it's similar to search, but it shows everything. So it's not that useful. Um, it can also show different things like payloads, but that's going to take a while. Um, so after we have these options here, we can set option by using the set command. So for example, set our host. What was our IP address? 192.168.0 and or sorry, 1 and 70. So that's one way to set the host. And now if we see options again, it has been set to this IP address. Good. Now we can simply now run the exploit. So or run or exploit. So you can either use the run or um, exploit command and it will execute the exploit. And it's ready. So now if I type, um, okay, who am I? I'm root, so we are the root user on the target machine. If we do ls, we can see that we have the directory listing of the target machine. So it's, it's, it's the root of the um, PV, PWD gates in ET, etc unreal directory. So it's the, where the configuration of this unreal IRC server is stored. Um, there is something called sessions that allows you to run multiple interactive sessions to different computers, different targets. And if you are now in a session and you want to get out of it, you can control Z. So control Z will go and put this session one into background and we get back to this um, Metas Metasploit prompt. 
and now there's a command called sessions that lists current or active sessions so you can have more than one and you can swap between them so if you write sessions h you can see list of session commands for example we could um, we could uh, use the i to get back to the session session id num one over here so we just write sessions i one and we back get back to this session and continue giving those commands um, okay, let's put it to the background again and we can we can use the k, k option to big large k capital k to kill all the sessions or we can uh, just kill one session with the small k with the given id there are also other things that we can do. Session dash L is the same then. No, sorry, sessions dash, uh, dash L will just give you the active sessions. So, and one more thing, if we go to the session, in this case number one, and we want the exit, is you can do control C. So control Z, control Z is uh, to put it to the background, and control C is to abort or terminate the session and now if we do the sessions L again there are no active sessions so that's how you can manage sessions of um, that you have currently established to different targets or even to one target you can have more than one session on one target right okay so to summarize you can use the use command to use a particular exploit or auxiliary module or another module um, you can use info to get information about the module. You can use show options to show what are the options that you need to set, what are the required, what are the optional ones. Um, so, for example, set our host and then the IP address. Or if you are tired of using this set, our host many times you can also use set g which is the global variable for example set g our host 192.168.117 and then this will be used every time as our host in all the modules that you use so if i'm going to change the module for example um, select the mysql so let's say I'm not going to use it now, but if I'm going to use this module, I'm just going to do use show options, then this our host is already defined because it's a global variable. Um, global variables by default will be reset when we exit the framework and come back. So if you want to save the global variables, you can call the save command and it will be saving it to a um, configuration file which is loaded whenever you start this framework okay so that's basically very short tutorial of how to start working with this metasploit meta framework in the next tutorial i'm going to show you in detail how you do the port mapping um, port scanning properly and then uh, I will also show other tutorials where we will attack more um, vulnerabilities of this metasploitable. But at least now you know the basics how to use it. And I hope you have success and fun attacking the metasploitable tool. Thanks for watching.